Yeah. You take your piece of elephant dung and you take your mouse. This is a stand-in mouse. The real one will be later. Put them in the hole, cover them with the cardboard. Lay it out because you think elephants are going to come on by. And wait in the distance with your monofilament. When the elephant gets near, boop, you expose the mouse and all hell breaks loose. We've chosen this area because it's open enough that we can see what's going on. And we know there's some food over in that direction. And we're hoping that the elephants will come through here on the way to the food. And at the right moment, we'll roll over the ball of dung, release the mouse, and see what happens. Hey, Adam, are you done yet? I'm all set, ready to go. Well, with everything ready to go, all that's left is to get some fairly predictable predictions. For me, I see this the same way I would see a person looking at a fly on the ground. It's going to be so small that you may not even notice it. I don't see any reason why an elephant would be afraid of a mouse. I don't have high hopes for this myth. With the sensible money on the no reaction theory, it's go time. The elephants innocently approach the dung of doom in what must be the most easy to anticipate outcome in Mythbusters history. But then, as crazy as it seems, the elephant backs away. The Mythbusters, like me, are flabbergasted. Working under the assumption that it must have been the movement of the dung that freaked the Ellie out, the boys reset for take two, dung movement only. But this time, the elephant was undeterred. This is getting ridiculous. He didn't seem to respond to the ball of dung at all, and I think my timing was exactly the same as it was with the mouse in there. <laughs> it works for me. Elephants are afraid of mice. <laughs> not only was I totally wrong in the first test about the elephant not reacting at all to the mouse, but after it happened, I was sure that it was the dung moving. I was absolutely positive that was a dung moving. So we do another test, the dung moves, the elephant doesn't even notice. It has to have been the mouse. Working on the basis that science is repeatable, the boys are going to retry test one to see if they still get this incredible result. All right, let's see what happens. For the final time, the elephants approach. And lo and behold, in this David and Goliath battle, David wins again. He definitely seemed to take notice of the mouse, like it was a significantly different thing than just the dung. I wasn't dreading this result. I'm always pleased to be completely wrong. I'm more astonished that I'm finishing the day calling something plausible that I knew wasn't plausible when I got up this morning. He definitely didn't freak out, but he was very cautious. The mouse had his attention. It's that little grain of truth that we always look for in a myth, and there it was. There it was indeed. So with the mouse safe and well, despite <laughs> Adam's best efforts, and the elephants ready to move on, it's time to wrap this one up. How are we going to call this one? <laughs> Well, it wasn't a stampede. It wasn't like the cartoons where the elephant freaked out at the sight of the mouse. But the idea that the elephant was cautious around the mouse, I'd say we have to call that plausible. I'd agree. What do you think? Hello.